festivals in attendance. And as the day proceeded into the festivity activities, it was estimated between four and five thousand dollars, four and five thousand people enjoyed the celebration, which was financed by Lester Dent. The information presented here today will in no way reflect the impact that Lester Dent had upon the community through his support of local endeavors as well as his generous financial assistance to the community. Beginning in April 2014, I made contacts with Missouri Department of Transportation officials regarding the need to replace the Route D BNSF Railroad Bridge due to serious deterioration. I was initially told by a MoDOT employee who's not here today. <laughs> During a legislative meeting sponsored by former Senator Brian Munslinger held in Jefferson City, that our bridge wasn't in serious need of repair or replacement, and many others were higher on the list of priorities. I continued my battle for the bridge replacement, and prior to August 14, uh, 2014, moving forward tax issue, we had residents bombard the state office with emails and letters, and they finally agreed that the bridge had good chance of being funded. However, after the ballot issue was overwhelmingly defeated by the voters of Missouri, the bridge was removed from the priority list. In December 2014, I was notified by the Missouri Department of Transportation that the last inspection of the bridge had showed significant deterioration than the previous inspection that was being posted with a 20-ton weight limit. Even after the four inspections, the bridge was repaired with only temporary band-aid fixes. After several more attempts to get the bridge replacement funded, the city was officially notified July of 2017 that it had been placed on the stiff replacement list for 2020. The original project cost was $1,769,000, which $1,416,000 was from federal funding, $335,000 was from state funding. The ending project cost was estimated at $1,811,530. April 18, 2018, the survey crews were on site to prepare the design portion of the construction project, and the thought of the new bridge finally became a reality. In February 2019, Lieutenant Governor Mike Kehoe, along with other state and local officials, attended a news briefing regarding the bridge replacement, and the governor accompanied MoDOT officials under the bridge for inspection of the significant deterioration. During the briefing, Kehoe stated that Governor Parson was a strong advocate for the repair or replacement of around 250 deteriorated bridges in the state throughout through the SIP program, SIP funding. After the funds were approved, the city of Oplata was notified that we would be responsible for the cost of relocating the electrical services before the bridge was demolished, the old one, our electric line ran across here. We had to reroute it across the vineyard. That cost the city of Oplata about $50,000. The original, <coughs> the original bridge, bridge had a 182 and a half span in distance and 22 foot wide with an unprotected pedestrian walkway. The new bridge is 28 foot wide with a concrete barrier between the traffic and pedestrian walkway, as well as protective wire fence, which was required by MoDOT for safety features. During the analysis of the bridge's need for replacement, it was estimated that over 2,000 vehicles cross the bridge daily. Without the assistance and support of area engineers, Amy Crawford and Brian Utite, and retired area engineer Brian Hafner, this project might still not have been a, become a reality for the community. They fought hard for this project, and I appreciate all their endeavors. The demolition of the former BNSF Route D Railroad Bridge that was dedicated 85 years ago today began on August the 17th of 2019, after several delays, and the bridge was officially reopened for traffic almost seven months later on March 4th, 2021. After it was reopened, there were several days that day traffic was delayed and deterred due to contractors finishing the dirt work. Discussion began during the early part of 2020 regarding the possibility of naming the bridge after deceased La Plata resident Lester Dent, who was an author of several Doc Savage no novels. 
Beside his fame of being an author, he was an influential and support, supportive member of the La Plata community until his death in March of 1959 at the age of 54. Cindy Moore of the Friends for La Plata Preservation talked to me several times regarding the idea of honoring Lester Dent. Cindy attended the La Plata Board of Aldermen meeting on July 14, 2020, and the board unanimously resolved a resolution that night to support the naming of the bridge. And a petition was passed around and the 100 signatures were very easily acquired to be submitted to MoDOT. Mark Lambert submitted the application for MoDOT with the legislative support of Missouri State Senator Cindy O'Loughlin. The naming of the bridge became official in a letter to Mark dated April 6, 2021, and the signs were ordered. On July 9th, MoDOT notified Mark that they had approved Friday, September the 24th as the date of the official unveiling dedication ceremony. Mark picked that date since it was exactly 85 years from the date of the original bridge dedication. Lester Dent's family lived in La Plata area from the, at least the 1860s. Lester was born 1904 in La Plata Township and graduated from La Plata High School in 1923 and began attending Chillicothe Business College. Lester and his wife Norma moved back to La Plata part-time to be close to his aging parents in the mid-30s. He became involved in his father's dairy farm northeast of La Plata. Lester Dent, La Plata writer, was a master of ceremonies at the dedication of La Plata's post office held at Green Theater on November 25, 1937. He was instrumental in sponsoring Saturday night boxing matches during the summer in the town square of La Plata. He would travel to local towns in his yellow Packard convertible on which he mounted two large speakers up front. This is how he advertised the boxing matches. Although Lester and Norma never had children of their own, Lester was always interested and involved in the lives of young people. Two individuals that still reside in the community were mentioned in some of his history of Lester Dent. Sarah Beth Cash Fouch cleaned house for the dance while she was in high school and was employed at his Airviews business. Blanche Mercer Meeks was listed as a member of his photography club he started in the early 1940s in his basement. The La Plata Commerce Club was very active in La Plata in the 40s and 50s, and Dent was always involved in their, their events. In 1945, he sponsored a Macon County Fair and Fall Festival in La Plata which included the dedication of Plato's new Santa Fe Depot and the burning of the bonds for the city water system. Dent was in instrumental in founding the local Boy Scout chapter in February 1944 that was sponsored by the La Plata Commerce Club. Dent was involved in civil defense program in, in La Plata in the 50s. His longtime fire, La Plata fire member and fire chief Jerry Thomas wanted me to make sure and mention that Lester organized the La Plata Rural Fire Association in 1954. He also purchased the first truck that the city of La Plata used for many years. Dent was heavily involved in La Plata's centennial celebration in 1955 and completely financed the 4th of July celebration. His aerial photograph of La Plata was used as a cover of the centennial booklet. It is also said that he wrote and produced the centennial booklet as well. Lester Dent's writing career began in 33 when Street and Smith Publications hired him to author the Doc Savage series under the name of Kenneth Robeson in their pulp magazines. The first Doc Savage adventure story penned by Lester Dent was The Man of Bronze. Doc Savage was a fictional character whose adventures introduced American Depression era readers to the world's first superhero and launched the career of a man who would become one of the nation's most prolific writers of fiction. Of the 181 original Doc Savage stories published, Dent wrote 179 of them for Pulp Magazine. It is said that he turned out a 60,000 word manuscript every month until his death at the age of 54. All of these original stories were reprinted in paperback form by Bantam Books in the 60s through the 90s. Today, a new generation of readers are discovering Doc Savage through Will Murray's new Doc Savage adventures. There are, there have been, they have been on NPR radio station, now available on CD, and the 1975 movie. Doc Savage, Lester Dent fan clubs are found all over the world, along with Doc conventions and meetups. 
There are now rumors of a possible television series of Doc Savage stories, and I've been able to obtain a contact who will keep us updated if and when that happens. La Plata has been the site of at least three Doc Cons and fans who must have did, and Doc Savage events which have been made their way to La Plata as a pilgrimage of their modern day hero. Lester became a member of the La Plata Masonic Lodge on May 11, 1939, and some of his fellow brothers are present here today. The Lester and Norma Den home was built in 1941-1942 and placed on the U.S. National Register of Historical Homes in 1990. Lester's wife Norma resided in La Plata until she passed away August the 23rd of 1995. The home was purchased by the current owners, Curtis and Judy Frankie, who are here today, and they occupied it for 25 years. The MoDOT employees were at the site early yesterday installing the signs and covering them for the official opening. If any one person has put La Plata, Missouri on the map, that person was Lester Dent. Lester was truly a strongly moral man in all he did. He began each day with a series of exercises that strengthened him physically and mentally. Doc Savage characters and world view is displayed in his oath that I would like to conduct my final portion of this dedication. Let me strive every moment of my life to make myself better and better, to the best of my ability, that all may profit by it. Let me think of the right to lend all my assistance to those who need it, with no regard for anything but justice. Let me take what comes with a smile without loss of courage. Let me be considerate of my country, my fellow citizens, and my associates in everything I say and do. Let me do right to all and for this. And it, let me be clear, it was a group effort. Uh, someone let us know that uh, the, uh, the DOT had a program that you could uh, honor someone by uh, naming the bridge after them, and we knew about the bridge being built. And so uh, I did the, the legwork on the application itself, but there were a whole lot of uh, aspects to it that uh, other people helped with. It was really a, a large group effort. Uh, so, and I want to thank Cindy Moore, who was involved in that and gathered the 100 signatures that we needed to go along with the application. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, State Senator uh, Cindy O'Loughlin, who sponsored the application. We needed a, a legislative sponsor. Um, I'd like to uh, add, thank uh, Sherwin Dent and, uh, and Sherry Dent, who uh, we needed a family member to, uh, to sponsor the application too, so we got all those things together. Um, we had, uh, I have to use my cheat sheet here, we had uh, 73 donors, uh, we, had to, we had to pay for the signs, we had to raise the money to pay for the signs, $3,200. Had 73 donors, the average gift was uh, about 50 uh, $50, and these are all Lester Dent fans and Doc Savage fans. And if you're a Lester Dent fan, you're a Doc Savage fan. If you're a Doc Savage fan, you're a Lester Dent fan. Uh, I started reading these books. I, you know, I grew up in a, a town of about 15,000 in Iowa, and I started reading these books when I was 14 years old. I discovered the copy of The Man of Bronze, the first book on a paperback uh, shelf in the local pharmacy and uh, I read the back cover blurb and thought, oh, this looks interesting and bought it. And I was, you know, kind of read a lot of superhero comics when I was a kid. And, and, uh, and then I started reading about Doc Savage and about Lester Dent. And, uh, and I will say, I've been coming down for, I, I live uh, uh, just north of Des Moines and I'm an attorney in Ames, Iowa. I, I've been coming down to La Plata for uh, over 20 years and putting flowers on Lester and Norma Dent's graves. And so uh, I, I, I've been to this town a lot and, and, uh, and I love this town. And so I'm just really excited to be involved in, in helping to make this happen. Um, I just wanna thank a few people. Uh, I wanna thank the fans that, that went out of their way to come here today. So uh, Matt Hebert is from Missouri. Jim Cox, you can raise your hand when I call your name. Jim Cox from Missouri. Uh, Craig Rogers, and or you, you're also from Missouri, right? And, uh, and then Craig McDonald and his wife, Debbie, who, where'd they go? Over they, here. Oh, <laughs> he's, right, right, he's right here, okay. <laughs> and who came from Ohio, and uh, Ray Rethmeyer, who came from Minnesota, and uh, Fred Kruzmark. Fred, where are you at? Fred rode his motorcycle from Seattle, Washington to come here today. He deserves a round of applause. <laughs> 
Uh, some other thank yous to people that helped with the application and the fundraising. Uh, Chuck Welch, Tom Barnett, uh, Cindy Moore I've mentioned, uh, Will Murray, uh, the Mayor Bragg and the Board of Aldermen of the City of La Plata were helpful so much. Um, and I just want to say this to us fans, uh, you know, I, I discovered these books when I was 14 years old. I still read them today. I've read them my entire life and I love them. And, uh, and to us fans, it, it is such a, an amazing thing to see our favorite author honored in this way. And uh, I just want to thank everyone that's here for coming out and, and being part of this. It's, it's really a special day. So thanks again. Thank yeah. you.